before I begin um, to do a recap on layout design, I think it's incredibly important to um, keep in mind that actually the term layout design doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> it, it, it depends what you're designing for. So say, for instance, anything that's sort of print based, which could be magazines, etc., books, um, we class as editorial design, which probably would link the closest to critical links. Um, however, there are things like UI design, like for websites, etc., and apps. Um, so some of the principles that I'm about to talk through, um, you know, you would be able to apply them to those design areas as well. But we are just going to focus on editorial. So editorial design um, has changed in the past 10 years or so, uh, mainly because of the sort of creation of the tablet. So um, that be iPad or iPhone, etc. Um, we're finding that more people today are viewing editorial content online. Um, now, that has obviously opened up a few doors for us and allowed us to do exciting things. However, some of the layout principles are you can still apply to both printed and digital. So that's what I'm going to cover today. Now, in order to really um, understand layout, uh, sorry, editorial design, um, we've got to really look back um, at a really key time in art history, which was modernism. In the early 20th century, the war to end all wars didn't end war at all. It stoked the fires of change. A traumatised world was ripe for change. The world was ready for modernism. Modernists wanted to forget history, or at least reinterpret it. More than just a style, modernism applied to virtually all forms of creative expression. Innovative artists like Picasso, Escher, Dali, they all started looking at their world differently. Other artists tried painting light itself. These were the Impressionists. Surrealists went a bit further. We had entered the age of the isms. Cubism, symbolism, futurism, constructivism. All these new modern ways of looking at the world blew people away. When it came to architecture, modernists were intrigued by emerging technology. Concrete, glass and steel featured heavily in their buildings. Modernists believed mm. that they could design a better society. Ornamental indulgence was considered a frivolous waste of effort. They thought function should always dictate form. And that mankind's intelligence, creativity and capability for radical thinking should be celebrated. Take the Russian inventor Georgi Krutikov. He suggested an idea for a city held aloft by electrical currents. This at a time when there was barely enough wattage to keep the lights on. Not everything they designed was a resounding success. But you could argue modernism was the single most influential movement of the 20th century. From house music to house wares, tables and chairs to graphic design, all have been created by the aesthetics and ideas of modernism. So let's focus on some of those values um, that we see in modernism. Um, and then when we look at graphic design of that period, you can see there was a massive shift. Um, you know, there was a clear move towards function, you know, really sort of simplifying layouts, um, the focus really being on the viewer and how they can interact with the piece of design. Um, now, the designer that really influenced this movement um, was a typographer called Jan Chikold. Um, and he produced a book called The New Typography and it was basically like a manifesto on a, a, a new vision for the way that we can use typesetting um, and embedded in that was what we know today as the grid system. So here is um, an example of one of those grids. Now arguably this is one of the most important pieces of design that we've seen in the 20th century. I know what you're thinking, it's just a bunch of lines, um, but it's far more than that. What this doing is it is dividing our page up equally. Now, to make this simpler, and I'll show you how you can apply this to a design, first thing we need to do is highlight some anchor points. So here you can see I've highlighted some anchor points, and then if I connect them together, you'll see that two boxes appear. Now, 
Chickold believed that if you placed your information along these lies or in this case within these boxes, it would make it easier for the viewer to engage with the work. So I've designed um, a very quick layout here with some text and some headings um, using that grid system. Now, as you can see, it's very easily accessible. It's, I can easily read this and it flows beautifully. And that's what he wanted to try and do, create a set of rules that people can apply to their design work that and inevitably make it better. Um, now, that grid system is one of thousands. Um, there's a few on the screen here. The way to view the grid system is to just see it as dividing your page up, whether that be into two, three, six, whether it is to be divided horizontally or, or vertically. Um, but you need to think about how you would lay um, the material out and how people would interact with your design. So really consider how the grid system can help with your layout. Now, anyone that's really interested in modernism after that and really wants to sort of do some more research into the grid system, there's some artists here that are definitely worth looking at, the typographers, etc. Um, so have a look at them. And these are books that are also available in our library. Um, anyone that really wants to, you know, learn more about editorial design. Um, whether it be the grid system or not, or typography in general, the graphic design, The New Basics, is a great book to get started so with. Now let's look at applying um, the idea of the grid system to your critical links. Now, for lower six, um, we ask you to record your research in the form of a critical link. Now there's two variations. Um, there is the gallery sketchbook and then there is the critical links that go in your sketchbook or sometimes in our on an A1 board. Um, but before we do that, here are the initial planning stages to your critical links. So the first thing is looking at information. The second is deciding on the grid system, so how um, the audience is going to view your work. And then finally, um, typography selection. Uh, so let's start off with the information. So this is like gathering your research, etc. Um, so this would include um, sort of headings, subheadings, text, images, quotations, things like that. Um, now, as you're gathering that information, ensure that it's relevant to um, the work that you want to sort of develop. Um, it needs to link. Artists do a variation, lots of variations of different types of work. So please make sure that it's the, the work that you're selecting is relevant. Um, the second as well is you need to think of how the reader will view the information. So sometimes it's easier to add more quotes or have more imagery in your link. And lastly, um, we need to think carefully about how we can embed some of those di ideas into the layout. And the grid system is going to help us do that. So that's the next phase. Um, so here's my information that I've gathered. So this um, is something that we do in the lower six. It's called the camera and it's an introduction to the camera obscura. So you can see here I've got my headings, I've got my subheading, I've got the body of text, um, some images, make sure the high quality images, that's really important. And then I've got some quotes as well. So this is all the information that I'm going to include in my critical link or my research page. So now let's think about the grid system. Um, now, again, thinking about the grid system, really it's just about thinking how you're going to divide the page. So is it going to be portrait, landscape? Are you going to divide it up into two or three sections? Is it going to be read sort of vertically or horizontally? It's things like that you need to think about. You know, how is the audience going to interact with your critical link page? So just for an example, um, this is a basic grid system that I've just created. As you can see, I've got the margins on the outside and then I've split the, pla the page sorry, into two sections. One of the sections, the section on the left hand side, as you can see, is slightly bigger than that of the right. So I'm just going to show you an example 
Um, so this is a critical link that I've just put together with that information from before. So it's all to do with the camera obscura. Now look at how I've used the grid system here. So you can see on the left hand side, um, the body of text is within that margin. Sorry, that um, section of the grid. Um, with the quote at the bottom and on the right hand side where I've placed my photographs um, and also my subheading you can see that fits carefully into that grid as well so you can see how I've split the page up it creates order it makes it easier um, to read and view the work now I've done some variations from that as well again using the same grid system on the um, middle design you can see that I've put um, a big title behind the text saying the camera, the outline of the word camera. Again it's all within that grid system that I've designed. So by placing your work in order using the grid system it really does make it easier for um, the audience to view and read and interact with your work. And lastly um, it's selecting your typeface. Um, this is incredibly important. Again, you need to understand the differences in typefaces. Um, so here are the two main typefaces. We can see we've got a serif, um, which is considered to be more traditional. It's got sort of a, as you can see, the flick on the end of the A. And then we've got the sans serif, which is sort of um, considered to be very modern, um, minimalistic. Um, and also really does convey that modernist idea really well. So if it is that you're talking about something like the camera, um, you know, or about a fact file or a, a process in general, um, the sans serif tends to be better. If you're looking at more traditional things, um, it may be that the uh, serif font would be more appropriate for that. A lot of the time people do use sans serifs because they are more contemporary. Um, also, we will be uploading um, a video about this soon um, but looking at tracking, leading and kerning this again is very important make sure that you um, set your typography up correctly so it makes it e easier for the viewer to read hopefully you found this tutorial helpful um, just to finish um, these are the things that you really should be thinking about when putting your critical links together um, so first of all, you know, who the artist is, you know, when was the work produced, how was it produced and ultimately why and what is the artist or designer trying to say within the work. And the way that we do that is through research, diagrams, quotes and ultimately as well trying to sort of reflect those ideas into your layout. Um, and if you can do that, you will have a very successful critical link.